My favorite thing to do in the painting process is to paint outdoors to resemble the atmosphere that's out here today, which I can best express by seeing, feeling, smelling the dynamics of the movement that's going on in the waves and the sky. Rather than taking a photograph and going back to the studio and copying the photograph, I'm trying to capture my interpretation of the scene rather than just literally how it looks. So I'm not a illustrator, I'm an impressionist. The way I start a painting is doing a little thumbnail sketch first on a post-it and a contour sketch, which is just a silhouette outline of the shapes that happen to be in the scene. That first shape is a triangle and all shapes in nature are geometric, triangle, rectangle, or ovals. In this particular scene, this is a cliff in the distance which is downtown Laguna Beach. Here in the middle ground, there's another triangular shape. And this is a darker shape because it's closer to us. We just fill it in with a darker value of the shadows and the rocks that are jutting out from it. There's a little bit of sand and it forms an oval shape in front of the cliff in the distance and another oval shape in front of the cliff in the middle ground. But now in about a minute and a half, I've completed the sketch. That is the foundation of the painting I'm about to do on a small canvas. This is a warm-up, and this is a study which will give me the atmospheric effects that I will put in a larger canvas. So I take my brush and dip it into the blue, the red, and the yellow to do my sketch with. Now I'm going to add to the paint a product called Liquin. And this is to make the paint spread on the canvas and form a quick drying base for the shapes in the painting. Using the same red, yellow, blue average color, I'm going to scrub it on. I'm just putting in the shapes that represent the feeling of what I'm looking at. Now I've put color spots on the cliffs, sky, and water shapes in the painting. This shape in the distance, where Dana Point is, would be a cooler dark blue, which recedes visually. And this one is closer. That's the main cliff, which is where the main beach is. So we put a little bit of red, give it a little separation from the cliff off in the distance. Now this shape in the middle ground is darker yet. So now I'm using the warm lighter red to go with the same dark blue. It's a little bit darker than the cliff that's off in the distance. Now the color shapes are in place. There's a little bit of greenery on the side of the hill. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow combined with warm red and the cool blue. I'm putting some spots of color here on top of the cliff, which represent the palm trees. I'm intentionally leaving out the palm trees in the foreground because they're blocking the view of the beautiful Riviera seascape. If we chose to put a larger vertical shape of these palm trees in the foreground, we simply use more bright light yellow to represent the palm in the foreground and adjust it later if you wish. And you can't make a mistake in a study because that's all it is, a study to represent the atmosphere and the feeling of the scene on a given day. And now we put the frosting in, which is the foam. And we just let it kind of fall off the brush so that it will have thickness and movement to it. Now right on cue, these waves all of a sudden started coming in. And so often when you're doing outdoor painting, you'll have some highlights suddenly appear in the scene that you didn't see when you first arrived by being out here during the course of doing the painting, which took 45 minutes. This has gone now from a post-it to a study, and now we'll go to the studio and do a larger painting. Using this as the reference, I'm going to take the study, which is intentionally unfinished, and transfer it into a more finished painting that's four times the size as the little study. 
doing the same basic steps that I did outdoors. I'm putting four spots to divide the canvas into thirds. These spots represent locations for a focal point or a highlight in the piece. For the first cliff, I'm stopping at the golden section of these four points. Now we are done with the design and we take our big brush and we're going to block in these shapes. The most important part of a painting is the underpainting. It gives you a preview of what the final piece is going to look like and whether it's going to work or not. What I'm doing at the moment is called laying in the spots of color. That's the most enjoyable part of the painting process for colorists like me. And that becomes your trademark, it is the colors and the values that you use to make those beautiful colors sing. The sky today was kind of a purplish gray. In the deeper water, more dark blue and dark red. In the shallower water, lighter, warmer blue, representing the sand, yellow ochre, more ochre down here representing sand in the foreground. I'll put a little warm red into the sand here because it's closer. That makes this area visually come forward. Now we're going to take a smaller brush and do some definition. And for that, I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> Up until this point, being able to see clearly is more of a hindrance than a help. In person, you see soft edges, and that is a realistic concept going into the painting. To do the definition on the shapes that are off in the distance involves brushing the sky right into the edges of the cliffs. And there's some little trees up on the top of the cliff. So I'm putting, again, the soft edge there. There's no sharp edge until we get into this area here, which is the center of interest. This is in the area of one of the four dots, which is a highlight right here on the sand. I'm putting sharp edges on this particular cliff because it's part of the center of interest. It's right in the golden section, which is this part of the painting. I'm keeping this area in the shadow family. Shadow family over here, light family out here, because that makes the contrast and creates the drama. This is a wave that was coming in. This is working in the golden section here with those four dots we started off with and keeping the eye in this area of the painting. These little dabs off here in the distance represent the buildings on this main beach cliff. I'm not doing an illustration of the buildings. This is the art of suggestion. So even the detailed areas like this in the focal point is mere suggestions of what's there. I'm putting a little bit yellow here into the sand, giving a warmer look to the foreground than it is back there where it's cooler and further away. So it's going from cool to warm cool to warm throughout the painting and light and shadow. I've reached a stopping point on the piece. I may add some more definition tomorrow. I intentionally left out the uh, palm tree because I wasn't pleased with the effect in the study. And that's the beauty of uh, trying it out in the study first before you go to the larger canvas. This painting says essentially what I was feeling and seeing this afternoon. The movement and the design of this seascape are now in the piece. I've simplified the outdoor painting process of doing sketches, studies, and studio painting in three steps to show you how to take a sketch on a post-it and turn it into a study and then into a finished large canvas. That's it.